What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah, uh, Krabby Crab, you might know me as, Noah from Phone Dog, you might know me as. It's me, what's up? Welcome to Crab TV? Crabcast? What are we going to call it? I think we're going to call it Crab TV. Yeah, all right, Crab TV. This is episode number one. It is Thursday, September 18th, 2008. Uh, good morning to you from California, where it's still morning. And uh, here's what we're going to do on this episode. We're going to talk a little phone, a little netbook, a little uh, presidential race and email hacking. And we're going to dip into the mailbag, answer some of your questions. All right? So let's get started. Um, first off, uh, you know, you notice all the corporate branding and stuff. I'm not sponsored by anybody except, you know, phone dog. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm employed by them. There's no sponsorships here. I just happened to have an Intel mug I got when I was doing some work down at Intel and an MSI hat. I got, uh, where did I get this one? At the NVIDIA conference I went to. That's all. When you do tech, journalism, blogging, whatever, and you go to these trade shows and stuff and you do work with different people and all, you wind up with a lot of junk with corporate logos on it. So <laughs> that's all. There's nothing, uh, nothing going on here. Although if you want to sponsor me, you know where to find me. Sponsor the show, that is. All right, let's get to it. Uh, let's start out. A couple, couple uh, cell phone things and whatever. This relates to a mailbag question. Whoop, sorry there. Mailbag question I get a lot recently, and uh, so I'm not going to attribute it to any one person in particular. But in general, the question goes like this. Noah, what's going on with your YouTube channels? Why aren't all the videos all on one channel anymore? And I've answered this a little bit before. I'll, I'll answer it just again by way of saying to you... Um, there's a bunch of new cell phone videos from the CTIA show last week. Uh, they're all on the Phone Dog channel, youtube.com slash phone dog, or you can just go to the Phone Dog site, uh, the homepage, all the new stuff there. Phone dog.com slash Noah has all of my stuff, my videos, my blog articles, yeah, the podcast, everything else. I'll tell you about the podcast in a second. Lots going on. But uh, we were at CTIA last week. A whole bunch of new stuff came out, uh, all the new HTC smartphones. Some new stuff from Sprint, the LG Lotus, the Rant, uh, BlackBerry Bowl, BlackBerry Pearl Flip, a bunch of stuff. And then next week, of course, we'll be covering the big launch of the Google, the first Google-powered phone, the uh, Android-powered phone on T-Mobile, the HTC Dream, or at least that's what people think it's going to be called. Uh, that'll be on Tuesday, September 23rd, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time is the press event in New York. I won't be there, but I'll be covering it via, they're doing a webcast for media, which is nice. So I'll be covering it from like, I'll probably be in bed with my laptop and my coffee. No, I don't take the laptop into bed. Uh, that's weird. I'll be, you know, I'll be at home. I'll be just like this with my coffee cup covering on the laptop, but blogging about it live on Phone Dog. And we might have somebody there in person as well. Anyway, point being that the phone stuff is all on the Phone Dog channel now because we need to get it under the Phone Dog name for legal and business reasons, and also because I wanted to have this channel, Krabby Crab, freed up for, you know, stuff going beyond just the phones. So that's why we're working behind the scenes to get all the phone videos moved over there so they're all in one place so it's easier for you. But in the meantime, if you want the phone stuff, be sure to subscribe to that new channel because that's where it all is. Okay, so that hopefully kind of answers that question. I'm still with Phone Dog. Uh, Ryan's doing some stuff. We got some other people doing some stuff. You know, we're trying to expand because I can't cover it all. There's too much going on. So, so that's what's going on there. All right. Another mailbag question comes from Ziljan Master who asks, uh, Noah, dude, what's up? I'm also a drummer. I'm wondering what kind of music you play? What kind of music do you listen to? My kind of question, Ziljan Master. Thanks for that. Uh, what kind of music do I play? I've played all kinds of stuff from, I grew up on classic rock, played a lot of rock, through high school and stuff, and then in college, I was in a couple kind of weird funk jam bands. I was in a hip-hop band. I was in kind of a funk rock band. Um, out of college, I lived in New York before moving to California. I was in um, a couple of bands that, well, a bunch of different projects, but a couple that actually played out, played shows out in, you know, in bars and clubs. One was called The Open, and it was like an indie rock band. And the other was called Automat, and that was more of a, uh, I guess also indie rock. The open was more like guitars, kind of, you know, uh, not metal or anything, but like heavier rock. And the Automat band was more kind of a quirky, you know, singer-songwriter rock kind of band. Um, out here in California, I haven't been in a band that's played out, but I 
for about a year or so, every week, two friends of mine and I would go to the studio, set up all our gear, and just jam and record it. And at your own risk, you can check all, all that out at www.spymix.com, S-P-Y-M-I-X.com. Uh, that's all our stuff, all kinds of crazy space jams. All the music you hear in my videos is from bands that I've been in. A lot of it's Spy Mix. Some of it is this thing called Pliny McMoto, which is me and one of the guys from Spy Mix, and actually Doug from, uh, you've seen him in some of the Phone Dog videos, the three of us. Last year, Doug was in California for a couple months, so we went to the studio a bunch of times, did some stuff. So, yeah. What kind of music do I like? I like all kinds of stuff. Uh, some of my favorite acts of all time include, let's see, uh, Led Zeppelin, U2, Prince. Uh, I was a huge Rush fan. Call me a dork if you want, but especially through high school, huge Rush fan. Uh, I love funk, so I love, uh, you know, like James Brown, the Funky Meters, that kind of stuff. Uh, more recent stuff. The new TV on the radio album, I can't stop listening to it. It's fantastic. Uh, I like Spoon. I like Block Party. I like Foo Fighters a lot. Um, uh, there's a band called Luna, who's not really around anymore, but I like them a lot. I go through kind of phases where I'll listen to something new and really get into it and then kind of burn out on it and move on. Uh, I love R.E.M., uh, older R.E.M. especially. Um, the Police, you know. There you go. Uh, anything that's got good drums in it. I was really heavy into jazz for a while in college. Not so much more recently, but, you know, Coltrane, Miles Davis, all that kind of stuff. So, there you go. Zildjian Master, thanks for the question. Hope that helps. I'm sure I left a ton of bands off that list that, you know, that I listened to. But All right, another uh, mailbag question I've gotten from a few different people, but we'll attribute this one to, uh, who is it? Bobby. Um, Bobby asks... Hey Noah, what do you use to make your videos? What kind of computer, what kind of camera? Um, I get that one a fair amount and uh, get some good comments on the videos. Glad you like them. Um, I, computer-wise, I use a Mac. Um, I've always used Macs, probably just because my elementary school had an Apple IIe. You're probably too young to know what that is. But uh, we had an Apple IIe. I started using Macs. My high school newspaper I worked on, we had a bunch of Mac classics, Mac SEs that we did it all on in PageMaker back in the day. And uh, so I've always used Macs. And so right now, um, my main computer is a MacBook. It's a white MacBook. It's the, uh, when it came out, it was the middle of the line one, not the low end, but not the, the high end black one. Um, been a little disgruntled. Uh, my MacBook broke like five times in a year and Apple replaced it for me, which is great. And then this new one broke. It still works. The break on this one is kind of more cosmetic. But um, so I looked into finally getting uh, a desktop machine for my office because I work both from home and I have an office and I ride my bike to work a lot and the laptop, you know, I carry it back and forth and it gets kind of bounced around and that might have been why it broke, et cetera, et cetera. So I looked into getting an office machine and uh, I do a lot of video editing, obviously. And anyway, long story short, I've been playing around with Windows, but I think I might just give in and buy an iMac for the office if I can get the money together. I've been trying to install Mac OS on a Windows machine. I built an Intel machine from scratch, and it runs Vista fine. Mac OS, hacking it on there has been kind of, it's not quite working right, and you know, I'm kind of a geek. I like to play with this stuff, but I'm a little tired of it. So anyway, uh, I use a MacBook. For video editing, I mainly use iMovie 08. Although, uh, I'm going to do this particular video in iMovie HD. Um, iMovie 08 has a lot of things that are frustrating about it, a lot of things that are great about it. It's really good if you're just doing, if you're not doing what's called B-roll. In other words, if you have just one, you know, long video thing, like most of the phone videos I do, and then you can do titles and voiceovers really easily. Uh, titles and graphics and voiceovers. The problem with iMovie 08, amongst other things, is that if you want to do what's called B-roll video, like, I'm still talking, but it goes from my head to a picture or a video of something else. It's almost impossible to do in iMovie 08. It's not super easy in iMovie HD, but it's a lot easier. And getting into using Final Cut Pro or Express is just kind of more than I need for the stuff I do. So that's what I do. All my videos are, uh, I did one I edited on Windows Movie Maker. And maybe you can pick out which one it was because it, it doesn't look as nice. But uh, everything I do is on a Mac, mostly using iMovie. And then, as far as cameras go, my main camera for most of the phone dog stuff has been this guy. 
the uh, Sanyo Exacti, I don't know which model number this is, HD1, the Exacti HD1. Um, this is uh, actually a several year old model. Um, got this about a year or so ago, and even at that time it was the previous generation. And uh, there's a lot that's great about it. It shoots HD, which I never use, because for YouTube you don't need it. Um, it, sh it, it records to a SD card, which is a lot handier than tape for moving it to the computer to edit and for carrying extra cards around in case you run out of space. It's very small and light, which is great for the trade shows especially. Um, and then having some problems on it, you might see in the videos the focus kind of drifts sometimes. Things will get blurry all of a sudden, or if I go from like a shot of me to a shot of a phone, it'll get a little blurry. So uh, talk to some other people who have the camera. They said, you know, same thing. There were some issues with that. Also, there's an external microphone jack on here, but it's a two and a half millimeter, not a three and a half millimeter. So I had to use an adapter and that wasn't working so well. So I recently looked into getting a new camera. Uh, one of the phone dog guys gave me this Ape Tech to use just to try out. It's a very inexpensive HD camcorder. And if you look on the phone dog channel, the recent videos, the one at CTIA for the uh, Samsung, which was it? I think it's the High Note was shot with this one. You can tell because the audio is really bad. There's no external mic jack. So we tried just talking right into it because it was really loud at the, at the show. And it just, it couldn't cut it. You know, and it's, frankly, it's not meant for that. For uh, a budget camcorder, this one's good. The Flip is also very good. This one has more uh, in terms of focus and other features. It's got a macro focus thing. But for what I need, it's not quite up to snuff. So the rest of the recent videos have been shot on this guy, the Canon FS100. And so far, I'm liking it. Um, I bought this one recently. I almost bought the Canon HF100, which is an HD camcorder. But I found out that you could not record to SD on that one. So you can only do high def. And again, for the YouTube videos, high def is overkill for me. And the files are much bigger. It takes much longer to work with them, etc. So I went for the S FS100. Cost me about 320 bucks. I didn't get this as a freebie. I bought it. And um, I went with this one because, for two reasons. One, it got good reviews in terms of image quality for the price. Two is it has that, that microphone jack. And the videos from this recent CTIA show, we shot them all, you'll see me holding a microphone. When you're in lab situations, uh, the microphone, the external mic just works a lot better. And it's rare to find a mic jack on a camcorder that's under four or 500 bucks. So, so far this one's been pretty good. Uh, the image quality seems good. The built-in mic works really well, but the mic jack is great for the loud situations. Uh, it's lightweight. You know, I, it doesn't, I don't know if it has as good of a macro zoom, a super close-up zoom, as the uh, Sanyo. And it's a little harder on the tripod, because when I do the videos with a phone on a table, and I have this on a tripod and I point it down, it tends to tip the tripod over, because it's just, it's built differently than the Sanyo in terms of, you know, the weight distribution. But uh, all in all, I got to say, for, for 320 bucks so far, I'm really liking this one. Um, so I'll try it out a little more before I decide whether or not, you know, it's the one for me. Um, it has a light built in, but I also picked up this super bright light. Whoa, look at how bright that is. Uh, this ran me about 25 bucks, I think. It's just a grid of a bunch of LEDs, super lightweight, and uh, it comes with a bracket. The, the Canon doesn't have a hot shoe mount for accessories, so it's got a bracket, you can put it into the tripod. Anyway, there you go. You, you ask a geek a geeky question, you get a long-winded answer, I'm sorry, but that's what I do. Right now, most of the videos have been on the Exacti. Right now, I'm using the Canon FS100, and they're all into the MacBook, just using iMovie, either HD or iMovie 08, depending. So that's the answer to that question. All right, um, this is not a mailbag thing. But I just wanted to mention, if you haven't heard about this, um, and I'm not getting into politics here, you know, I'm not going to tell you, whatever, who I'm going to vote for or who you should vote for or anything. But just to mention, there's a story that broke yesterday, Wednesday the uh, 17th, about Sarah Palin, the governor of Alaska who's on uh, John McCain's ticket, the VP candidate. Um, the story broke that her personal email was hacked into and it's a long story. You can read about it on KrabbyCrab.com. I have an article up there on the page. 
homepage, and then that links out to another article that goes into more depth about it on another site. But basically, uh, it seems like one person got was able to hack into her personal email and then posted some of the information to a, um, a bulletin board online, and then a bunch of other people tried to hack it, and all this stuff happened. And basically, there are screenshots of a bunch of her emails in her inbox and her contact list floating around the internet right now. Now, the legal ramifications and the morality of hacking into somebody's email, all that stuff aside, and that's a big aside, those are big issues. Here's, here's my thing. Supposedly, and I don't know if this is true or not, but supposedly her email address was sarah.gov, sarah.gov at yahoo.com. And supposedly, if the story is all true and these screenshots are true, she was using that address to conduct official government business as the governor of Alaska. Now, for one, that's illegal because government business has to be conducted on official government emails so it can all be archived and made part of the public record. Because, you know, these people are public servants, even though in America, you know, it doesn't always seem to work that way. Um, so, so that's illegal and all that aside. But here's the other thing. Do we really want, and I'm asking you, the tech-savvy viewer here, do we really want a vice president, someone who would be the leader of our country if something happened to the president, do we really want somebody in that position who's using a Yahoo account to conduct official business? I mean, come on. You know, granted, she's not in the White House or anything, but she's on the VP ticket. Get off the Yahoo. Get a secure government, FBI, encrypted, secured, encrypted, blah, 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 email address to do your business on. Yahoo? Are you kidding me? I mean, one of the stories I read said that her account was hacked into by somebody who, basically, they didn't even try to guess the password. They went straight to the security questions thing, and we're able to look up on Wikipedia, you know, her zip code, easy to find. Her, uh, what was it, her, the college her husband went to, easy to find. All this info, easy to find. So two things. One, if you're of voting age, please vote. Whoever you vote for, please vote. But think about this relative to technology and all that stuff. And second, for your own email account, those security questions might be an easier way to get hacked than your password itself. Okay. That's all I'm saying on that. Curious to see what you have to think of that. All right, in other tech news. No, 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 no. Let's, uh, let's go back to the mailbag. I'm sorry. I had a question on the Krabby Krab blog that asked, uh, hey, no, you mentioned the Lenovo S10 netbook that you ordered and uh, that it was supposed to ship on September 9th. September 9th is come and gone. Have you, uh, have you gotten your Lenovo S10 yet? Uh, good question. Thanks for the question. No, I haven't. And in fact, I canceled my order. Uh, I checked on September 10th, and my ship date had changed from September 9th to November 26th. And I looked around on some blogs, and that's been happening to a lot of people. So I called Lenovo, and they were like, yep, that's what our warehouse told us. That's our estimated ship date. It might come earlier. And I said, you know what? I'm going to cancel my order. Uh, two reasons for that. One, I don't know if I really need a netbook, especially since I might have to buy an iMac for my office, and you know I, I don't, I don't have the money to throw around. Uh, two, Lenovo's really dropped the ball in terms of handling all the customer service and the orders and stuff. When I first ordered it, it said it had a different graphics card, and it said it was going to come with an external CD-ROM drive. Those things both changed. There were typos. They, you know, they, they put up the product page and they start accepting orders and they confirm the order and then the specs change, which is messed up. And then second, the whole ship date thing, you know, all of a sudden it changes by almost three months from September 9th to November 26th. I understand there are, you know, shortages of the Atom chip and this and that, but like to do that without letting me know, you don't send your customer an email and tell them, you just change it. And I wouldn't have known if I hadn't been all over anxious and gone and checked the, uh, the order status online. That's just messed up, and I don't really, as great as the netbook seemed, as nice as the Lenovo keyboard is, I don't really want to do business with a company that's going to treat their customers that way, personally. Um, which is why I tried to get a Windows machine, because I've been a little unhappy with Apple's customer service, but I might be going back because Apple just makes a better product for what I need. Anyway, so there you go. That's the story in the Lenovo. All right, I've been talking for long enough. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for visiting the site. 
Uh, let me know. You want to see more, you know, more of this Crab TV? Do more mailbag stuff. Do some other features, other reviews. Let me know. We'll check it out. No, I have not gotten that Samsung YouTube camcorder yet. Uh, still waiting to hear from them about a review sample. They didn't have them yet. So, you know, we'll see you soon. Um, in the meantime, again, check out Phone Dog. Check out the Phone Dog YouTube channel, youtube.com slash phone dog. Subscribe to it. Make sure you get all the news on all the cell phone stuff. In the meantime, you can follow uh, my little world here on Krabby Crab. I'm working on a startup with a friend of mine not related to phones. Uh, it's going to be launching very soon, at least on Facebook, if not uh, also on the actual website. We're working on both. We actually applied to the Facebook fund. We got a good response from them the first time around, but we weren't quite ready with a prototype, so we reapplied. Should find out soon, so cross your fingers for us. We'll let you know about that uh, as soon as it's ready to go public. And the podcast! Oh yeah, real quick, I said I was going to stop talking. We have a podcast now. It's called Noah's Bark. From PhoneDog.com. Get it? Because Noah's Ark, but then Phone Dog, dogs bark. Noah's Bark. And also, I talk a lot. Get it? Uh, Noah's Bark. It's the Phone Dog podcast. It's available on iTunes. Um, it's also, you know, you can go to the Phone Dog website and you can get it that way. You can get it on Podomatic. You can get it on Mevio. But yeah, on iTunes, it's there. We're working still on the, uh, the graphics and all that. So if you go to iTunes and you search and you can't find it, um, I'll put a link so you can just go right to it. But we're working on that, trying to line up some guests for the next couple episodes. So it uh, should be fun. Let us know what you think. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'm Krabby Krav, but you can call me Noah. You can call me Noah from PhoneDog.com. Greetings from Northern California. We'll see you next time. Everybody.